Do you remember the first time you saw an Indigenous woman on television or in the theatre? Um, well, Indigenous women weren't, you know, you just didn't see them, actually, when I was young, growing up. Um, and I think that's why it's so important, all the work we do now. But I think the first woman I would have seen would have been um, Rosalie Kunoth Monks, who was in the amazing film Jedha, mm -hmm. um, uh, named after her. So, yeah, I think that was the first film. I would have seen it when I was probably, I don't know, seven or eight, something like that. Made a big impression on me. Yeah, absolutely. Nayuka, do you remember the first person you saw who was an Indigenous woman on television? Uh, I think... I never watched it because it was like just above, I think it was when I had to go to bed and I was young, but Deborah Mailman in Secret Life of Us would have been, um, yeah, the first time. I'm also thinking of that David Bowie film clip as well. Let's dance, yeah. let's dance, yeah. 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 Ningaling. Yeah, yeah. And, um, that was another one. And because yep. my auntie was meant to be in it, so it was like, it's always just been this story in the family. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been in the <laughs> But also deadly, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Deborah Mailman was probably the first. Yeah. yeah. Sally, do you remember the first woman you saw? Um, growing up in Narrow Mine, we had like two channels and there were, you know, <laughs> lived there till the 80s, so there wasn't a lot, there were hardly any Aboriginal people on television. But I think my, the, the actress that I think of the most when I was thinking about that question is Justine Saunders, mm. who was kind of one of our leading actresses and sort of blazed a trail for all the women coming after her. Mm. I mean, she used to talk about, in terms of how the people, Aboriginal women were, were portrayed, she would say every show that she was in as a black woman, she would be raped. Oh. Maybe you've gone too dark too soon. <laughs> um, raped or beaten, I think. <laughs> yeah. Raped or beaten. Yeah. But, you know, she yeah. always was like, when are we going to get a do when a, am I get a that proper I'm not role? Get, you know, dragged yeah. away. Yeah. And, yeah. So, dragged backwards yeah. through a hedge or something. Yeah. yeah. Nikki, do you remember the sort of character that you saw first on television? Well, look, we probably saw Deb Mailman the first time. I'm just taking a guess at that. Yeah. Um, but the first film I remember watching, which was after, you know, The Secret Life of Us came out, but it was um, the women in The Fringe Dwellers and, like, yeah. seeing that story and then kind of relating that back to my experience of that, like, my mum had, a, like, a similar life to that. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was, like, the first time I saw, like, this is an Aboriginal... Uh, this, this is a family that I can relate to or that's, like, my family and my yeah. community and culture. Yeah. But, yeah, a lot of the times it was, you know... Um, a lot of the same, you know, victims, um, or that's like the lone Aboriginal. Mm. Like there was never like a group of Aboriginal people on like mainstream telly in The Secret Life of Us. It's always like they had like a white parent mm. or they hung around lots of white people. Mm. You know, yeah. was that like that lone black fella. Like our experience in comparison to theirs. Yeah. Mm. And one of the early, one of the earliest films, I mean, I saw it later in life, but it was the documentary, um, My Life as an Aborigine with Essie Coffey. And that kind of had a great impact because it was, you know, just life out in the mission. And, and she was the filmmaker. She co-directed yeah. it too. And that was the first documentary made by an Aboriginal woman. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. In the 80s. I think so. But yeah. See, if you guys saw Deb Mailman, probably, you know, as mostly that first person, she only did her first film in 1995. Mm. So that's only really, what is it, t just over 20 years ago? Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Was that Radiance? It was, yes. It was wow. Radiance. Yeah. And the theme this year for NAIDOC is because of her, we can. Why do you think that's important? I mean, why now do you think that that is an especially pertinent message, Nakia? I think it's especially pertinent now. Um, I think it's really important that now we're acknowledging the work of Aboriginal women because I think, you know, our community doesn't exist within a vacuum and there's definitely been a shift within, you know, potentially this talk of this idea of a new wave of feminism, mm. looking at the moments of Me Too, Time's Up. Um, I also think, like, within my community, there's been a great level of... Uh, solidarity within Aboriginal women um, and it's been Aboriginal women who have you know from my nan and my mother who have paved the way for me to be able to have the life I live to you know people like Sally Riley who have given opportunities and created opportunities for people like myself to even have a career and it's it's women it's women who mm. who do the work and we often call them the backbones of our community um, and I think that's really important but we shouldn't be taken we shouldn't be taking Aboriginal women for granted, mm. you know, because not only are they the backbones, they're also our future. So I think it's, you know, we need to, with because of her, we can, if that can is a 
it's a doing word, you know, it's, it's a future word. Mm. It's not enough to take black women for granted. And I think it's a big message to the black men in our community to be like, you have to support black women. Mm. And Absolutely. that misogyny and, and, and uh, feminism or womanhood is, is you know, it's, it's those are factors within our community just as much as yeah, the and outside. I think for me, it's about foregrounding women because for yeah. so often, you know, in our communities, they are supporting a lot of other people. So it's kind of like foregrounding them going, they've done amazing things. But for me also, it's talking about um, the differences among our Aboriginal women as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people look at Aboriginal community and think it's all one community. But you look around this table and you see people from very different backgrounds. So the women in our community are really different mm -hmm. as well and have different paths and different journeys. And for me, it's like, let's highlight all those different journeys and achievements that yeah. people have done, even if that is working in a community at a grassroots level and that work is so important. And for me, it's also about sh sort of showing a way for younger women coming through. So like for me, you know, at my age and having the career that I've had, it's, we have to bring new young women through um, to, to sort of take over. Because we're getting Don't old. Think? We're getting <laughs> real old. And we need to retire. <laughs> yes. We need a rest. Old, yeah. and tired <laughs> and need Have rest. nothing to say. Yes. <laughs> I very much doubt that. I'm sure that we'll get through plenty today. Uh, Nayuka, um, who's inspired your work in that context? I mean, what's inspiring for you when it comes to this the Year's NAIDOC theme? In terms of, like, black feminist heroes, mm. um, I think, kind of going off what Nakia was saying, we live, I think we live in a really exciting time, um, seeing a lot of different work. At least I'm from Victoria and there's a lot of like a lot of our clans down there are matriarchal. So it's kind of like this sort of theme isn't a new thing for us necessarily. Um, mm. Like we try to live out those values anyway. Um, but there's definitely a lot of young black women and artists who, yeah, kind of centre like matriarchy in their work. And those, those sort of artists really excite me. Um, in terms of writing like Nakia, um, um, yeah, I was a huge fan before we worked together. Um, I'm like a that. huge fan now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love it. But like being, I think I'm really excited by, I think black women who kind of don't exist for white people or for the white gaze mm -hmm. and aren't afraid to like have sex on screen and aren't afraid to talk about politics or, or you know, queer stuff. and. Yeah, so it's hard to name all of the people, but I think a huge moment for me was, yeah, watching, there was a sketch in particular of Nikia's where she was having sex with someone, talking about the politics of that. Um, that was the first time I was like, oh, that's, we can do that. Um, and yeah, also going, I think what you were saying, like previously a lot of women, the black women that I was seeing, it was like, you know, the angry black lady or, the jovial aunt and all of those roles are really important but like the agentic black woman wasn't yeah had it was hard to find that but anyway yeah. I'm rambling. <laughs> Roger, do you remember there was, if there was a shift for you I mean you're from a community of really strong women as well where it's you know a matriarchal setup do you think that there was a time when there was a shift when it came to making art? Um, my community is patriarchal actually, it's, um, you follow your male line to your country um, and my community is one of the communities in Australia that suffer um, massive domestic violence issues and violence issues um, being perpetrated on us. So I think the theme of Because of Who We Can is t overdue mm. um, and I think globally we're seeing that uh, societies function better you know, whether it be white fuller societies or you know, communities, you know, multicultural communities, societies function better where you have um, power sharing with women and governance structures that represent women. So I think it's very specific to the Indigenous people that we positively support women because, I mean, it is a little bit of a cliche, but we do have a central role in caring and bringing up children and keeping families together, which is, mm. you know, part of the core unit of our society. So it's very important, I think, this theme for NAIDOC this year. Um, but your question was, when did it shift and women became empowered? Um, I think it's been very gradual. Mm. I think, for me, I've made films about the role of women in the movement and women have put themselves and issues of feminism 
on the back burner, I think, because we've promoted this broader agenda of Indigenous um, advancement or rights and we've put women's issues on the back because mm. a couple of reasons. We've had to stay united people um, and also sort of sometimes the theories of Western feminism hasn't necessarily suited our agenda, but I think mm. I, I think that's to our detriment that we, we, we haven't um, pushed women's rights as firmly as we have. Um, so, but I think, you know, it's, it's, the situation is improving. Mm. Um, you know, we're looking at new representational structures on boards where women are much more presented in the Indigenous sphere. Um, we're seeing women move into leadership roles across, you know, NGOs in the country. Um, so I think it's changing. Mm. Um, but I think there's a desperate need to value women and particularly young girls who are coming up through society and put a value on them and encourage them and appreciate them because I think we've overlooked um, Indigenous women to our own detriment.